some of you might remember these. No, you gotta do it on the fly, Dean. Dang right, it's working. It would look exactly like that, yeah. It's starting to become one of those plants that could eat you. Dean says his is about an inch larger. What are you laughing about? Isn't it about time for a commercial? <laughs> Dean's here. I am here. <laughs> and I brought fish. What'd you bring today? It's full of Corys that we caught in Peru. These are actually Joel's. I was quarantining them and uh, Joel's gonna pick them up here. Um, tequila. The Tequila Sunrise, right? That's yeah. What Extinct in the wild. Yeah, they're good eats. They like to be a little bit cooler, so I'm gonna try them on and the And it'd be better in your, in your place. Yeah. Well, my, yeah, yours is warm, so. Some of you might remember these. These are ones that Corey and I caught what I call the mountain trip. Yeah. In Peru. Jimmy's then, here. Jimmy's here. How cool like this. And then these are our baby stir bays that Corey just couldn't resist me not bringing him some. Although I ordered a thousand for you. I said, read me a thousand. Well, if you grow these up, and put them in a pond, you'll have a thousand soon. I see. Jimmy, what are you doing here? Um, taking pictures of the new heater? Yeah, the yeah. little heater that could. Yeah, so. it's been running my fry system for ever since we started testing. Know that when you see this video, we're still probably three or six months out. Like if we're taking pictures of samples today, right. that means we're still in uh, package art design, which means they haven't been run yet, which means they're not on a boat yet, which means they're still months away. Right. So yeah, I, I won't even show it to you guys because I don't want someone else to like contact the company and no, get in yeah, before us yeah. and, and all that. But yeah. yeah, so he's here to take pictures. We're here to put away fish. We're gonna get set up and figure out what else we're doing today. No, you gotta do it on the fly, Dean. Dean's trying to play out my idea. Right, and it's working actually. You're dang right it's working. This is the second one of your ideas that worked. Dean, that's my feeder. So these are mangroves and I got like, I wanna, however many are here. I think they said it was like 50 or 30 or There's something. There's a bunch. But it was like 30 bucks. It took like three weeks to get here. So they took a long time to ship it, but. These come from Florida? I don't know where, where these ones are coming from, but they're seed pods. And sometimes you don't get them with. Uh, Leaves? Yeah, or roots. They're just that seed pod. As they grow, so they keep getting taller, but the bottoms need to stay wet. You can't fully submerge. It's kind of like the bamboo. Right. And so... So this part has to stay wet. Yeah, and I don't have tanks that short, and I want to put a bunch in the fish room. Not... So one reason would be like using salt water to get a lot of waste out of the water. Right. But I don't have that problem. I have the opposite problem. We're dosing fertilizer every week and still unregisterable nitrates. So right. we're gonna have to amp that up even more. But what I really wanted was to see some green coming up out of the tanks and things. I used to sell these back in the day before I had my store and I worked at another store. I'd do, go to like little swap meets and stuff and I'd sell them for five bucks each, which you guys could do that too. Because if I got 30 of them for 35 or 40 bucks or what it was on eBay, you can imagine if you were selling each one for five bucks, that's a handsome profit. Now. Most people, they only need one or two. Right. They go, oh, that's neat, let me try that. And right. by buying in bulk, you could you could make some money at your club or something like that. But I, I actually do need them in bulk because... We want them everywhere. Yeah. So give me a second. These guys can grow in fresh water, brackish water, and usually salt water. You don't have to mist them or anything, only in salt water. So you got this green, super flexible... Yeah, they call it like plant wire or something. Wire. I bought it on Amazon. We'll try to put right. a link down below. I guess for both things, I'll try to find some links to make it easy for you guys. So I'm cutting about a foot of it. Yeah. And we've already decided that the end is not going to be enough to hurt anything in the tank. I don't think so, yeah. Yeah. And then I was just doing what I call it, I think, a half hitch. So over the top and back around. Hmm. Not super tight. It's lots of rubber on the wire. So this isn't it's just fine. like a normal wire. It's meant for plants so it won't cut into it. Right. And then we're just making a little holder. Hanging it there. And, and so why we're doing this. Oops. Well, kind of that actually. That's actually the reason. Is so that, as this thing keeps getting taller, we want, the end goal is that the roots will sit on the bottom. Right, right. Now do know that things like goldfish will usually nibble on those roots, uh, silver dollars, Anything that's a little omnivorous, maybe severums, you know, while it's only a couple little leaves, maybe Jimmy can find 
or, or Zenzo can supply us with a picture. He's got a, one he's been growing for a few years. When we redid his room, he had it going. And, and it's still going, and it's bigger. Yeah, it, and I, I, I think Charles Clapsaddle might have some going in his, uh, in his, his greenhouse. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. You know, and they can get ginormous, like tree size. Normally when you buy them, you get like from here to here, right? Yep, that it would look exactly like that, yeah. And they call it a seed pot. They call it a seed, and you have to sprout it. These are already sprouted and uh -huh. rooted. Yeah, we might put in a big pothos. My wife's got a giant pothos growing in the kitchen that's outgrowing the kitchen. It's it's starting to become one of those plants that could eat you. Now Dean's working on setting up the, the beta light. Two screws in the wall. He actually got a first try and I wasn't filming. So, oh, he's got power to it now. We haven't quite hidden the core. We need to grow a plant in front of it. Oh, exactly. Yeah, we put yeah, a plant yeah. in front of the cord. Checking in on Elmer. Dean says his is about an inch larger, which I believe my guy's slow and steady here. Got rid of the blue green algae using um, erythromycin or the uh, maricin. Still got some algae. I got to put some more algae eaters in there. I put in a couple of caves to get some of these long fin super reds to pair off. And then I can remove a bunch of the extras. Like I could just make pairs myself, but this is the lazy way to do this. So every tank in here gets easy green, right? And so like this crinum doing really well, you know, it's got zebra auto on it, it's got snails thriving. But the root feeding plants in here have not been getting root tabs. So they're melting back and going translucent. And so this is one thing you can be looking for when you're running out of food, is this melting and just not looking very good. You can see melting happening right there. And that's quote unquote that crit melt. You can see it in that. But you see the snails, they are eating some of it and putting holes in it. I don't think I've put any root tabs in here since we set this up six plus months ago. So that's to be expected. If we go down here, root tabs are more recent in this one. And this is more like an eco-complete type substrate. So it will uh, take in some of the liquid fertilizer. So we're not having that problem here. Then if we go all the way down, down to here, we have the sand. This one's holding together okay-ish, but it's a sign that it would like some root, like that one's not, but it's a sign it wants some root tabs as well. So usually for me, I do them all at the same time. So when I have one, one tank that's like, okay, that one's starting to go, I know, well, I should probably hit all of my root feeding plants. What are you laughing about? Your, your makeshift made a planter? Yeah. See, it's a good idea. I just used one of these aquarium co-op specimen containers. It'll hang right back here. Yep. And we can actually put real dirt in it and stuff. And a little house plant there. That's actually a pretty good thing I haven't seen too many people do. I'm sure the internet will chime in and be like, I've always been doing that. But I haven't seen anyone do dirt plants. Because it's so easy to be like, oh, let me get them some water. <sighs> well, I was wondering if you could do um, like some yarn or something. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Constantly yeah, and the pothos we're going to do, I was thinking, is there a way we can make it do what we want to do with auto water change and, and all of that? Or is it, yeah, so yeah. that might be the next thing I go and grab is this giant plant. It might be more than one person, I don't know. Two Maybe Katie and I will bring it out. We'll figure out where does this beast live. All right, so here's the pothos that was in our kitchen. It's obviously a little tangled up from the move, but, you know, it's it's definitely big. We're trying to decide where it goes <laughs> and how. how it goes. Yeah. We don't want to try, we don't want to bust it all up either. Yeah, we're not trying to, to bust it up or anything, but there's, you know, like that one's three feet, but there's some that are like 20 feet long. Yeah. This one's probably more like 10 feet or so. Yeah. So far the running idea I think is centered and then it can go that way, that way, it can go up and go around. And then I want it to go into some of the ponds so it can tap in and get some I nutrients. I was wondering, like, if we if we ran this and then if you drop, like, that section in a pond, yeah, it's going to send roots there, right? Oh, yeah. Yep. Because we could, it's long enough to go in both ponds, both directions. Like, I know what happens to this. Like, eventually it gets wet and then the wood starts to rot. And I'm like, oh, if we put it on that wood, we can put another plastic tray, I guess, underneath that one. That's what I would do. All right. So we just finished up the live stream. We got back from Home Depot. 
while I was setting up the live stream, Dean was starting to work with the pothos, which we had done a bunch of planning so far, but so far we've got that growing. Yeah. It's looking pretty cool. And then we've got these big long tendrils that go around that now we've got to attach the wall and figure out how to make it look cool and not right. dumb. Because yeah, I've done this before where it's like, that's a giant pothos plant that just kind of looks so out of place. I've already thought of something it's going to need. We're going to have to need some lights. Oh, that's a good point. And that would be really easy to do because you have those lights. I think I do. Yeah, I can go grab some. And then when all, like as you said, and I hadn't thought about that yet, but it's going to take a couple weeks for all the leaves to turn the they're right way. Turn to the right. Because yeah. right now they're used to being off of our counter and on the right. floor because it was so long. As you can see, like it's 20, and 30 feet long. And we're going to try to get this up in here. Yep. And all of these leaves are going to have to turn too. Yeah. And if we're going to make Mexican food, we got to get to work. So cheers. All right, so that's what we ended up with so far. Obviously, it has to grow in a bit, and uh, now we're going out to some Mexican food with my wife and her mom. And then we'll finish up. Dean wants to get some shrimp and maybe some of these mangroves, and those ones are going to let grow into the water so they can suck nutrients out and just be another, another source of food for this giant thing. Awesome. The day has finally come when I can repay Dean by giving him some stuff I've bred. <laughs> and it's cherry shrimp. <laughs> Are we got a net there at all? Yeah, there should be a bunch of nets right down there. Isn't it about time for a commercial? Oh, wait. Is this? Is this? Is this? <laughs> this is the new co-op net, right? That's right. Carbon fiber handle. Collapsible. Yep. So you can... People loved them that brought them to the event. Yeah. Because they went in the suitcase. That. You can put them in your suitcase. That's what that many people are going on an event, but. Zenzo also wanted some of these, but he didn't take any back this last trip. Poor guy. He says he Poor doesn't guy. have luck with them in San Francisco. Neither do I. The bunch right through here. Okay, under the plant. Yeah. Yeah, oh, shake it, you should be it. left with some in there. This stuff is doing really good. What is this called? Hornwort. You gotta, I put handfuls of food in for all the plecos. And if you don't though, it'll shed and die back. So it can be a pain, but yeah, nice red cherries. There's some shrimp in there. Yep. You can, you know, these haven't been cold or anything. So you might find some that are more brown than red or, I mean, not super brown, but. Oh, wait, nice, wait, 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 wait. Nice buried there, there, there's a there. problem here. Yeah, there is snails in there. There's a problem here. I don't want any of those. Yeah, well, wait, throw them in there. I keep them in here so I can feed the, the oh, turtles. The turtles? They They're the great snacks. calcium snacks. Snacks. <laughs> yeah, I, I run my hand. So what I do is I've shown this on video before, if you've ever watched one. I run my hand across and you get a handful of snails to feed them. And then it's weird when you walk away and you start hearing them and they crunch, crunch, crunch. Is that all the shrimp that were in there? <laughs> no, there's a million of them in here. So there was like, like that guy would be a coal right, right there. Right. Because they're more of a, this a is brown. A yeah, so the, the coals I also put with the turtles, you can see them eating them. That one just grabbed a, a snail and ran away with it. It's got in his mouth. You put the coal shrimp in with the turtles? Yeah. And if they can live, great. They start a colony. If they're a snack, then they're a snack. Because what else am I going to do with a brown shrimp? So if I take this and this, that's enough for a colony? Oh, yeah. You can see... Lots more shrimp down here. You can run it across. You can run it down here if you want more buried females. But you can see all of them. So I wonder, is all water sprite naturally broadleaf? No. And when it grows out of the water, it gets skinny, and then they sell it to us. No, there's there's is a bunch variety? of ceratopterus. I think is how you say it. There's a bunch of different types, and not all of them do well floating. Did I get one or not? You did. You sure? Yeah. Yeah. Is that cool? Baby male. This is my favorite thing when all the shrimp come to the, the when you move all the lettuce or the yeah, they all come cornwort and you can see them right here where they're just all grazing. Oh, that's awesome. They'll do that when I feed and you get this like great migration of shrimp. What's this other guy? That's, a, that's a barb of some sort. Yeah, that's a rosy barb. I don't know why he's in here. Oh, now you can really see how many shrimp you got. Yeah, there's a lot. All right, say goodbye, Dean.
Goodbye, Dean. Gotta go home. Eat. Save these for next time. Thank you.